Hey, Brian Osborne here from Answers in Genesis, and in today's lesson, we're looking at the triumphal entry. And when I say that phrase, I can't help but think about the time I was over in England at Windsor Castle, and I got to see the changing of the guard. And that was a pretty cool thing to see, I'm not going to lie. It was pretty neat to see the whole thing take place. It's very royal, very regal. You got this whole band of people coming out playing all their instruments. The guards follow behind. They're all protected by guards. It's like a big old parade in a sense. And the people line the streets to watch this whole big procession take place. It's a pretty big to do. And you can tell for the people there, it's very symbolic, symbolic and significant. And as we look at Jesus' triumphal entry, it is also very symbolic and very significant. As we see this event take place, first of all, it's important to understand he's fulfilling prophecy. Actually, Jesus shows his omniscience. He sends the disciples into the town to get the donkey, just as he said it would be there, to bring it back to him, to ride in on, to fulfill prophecy, to fulfill Zechariah 9.9. We see Jesus' humility and, again, his sovereign control to make all this happen, and to ride in on the donkey. And, of course, he's submitting himself even to the point of death, as will be coming in the days to come. We see as he rides in on this donkey, the people, his disciples, are welcoming him as the son of David, the Messiah, the king, they're laying down their cloaks and their and palm branches, which is the way you welcomed a king. And this got the attention of the city of Jerusalem. People were all stirred up. Who is this man? And they're calling Jesus a prophet. But they welcomed him as a king. Now, they misunderstood because they were hoping for, it seems, a political Messiah, the one who would come in and set them free from the Romans and give them the freedom. But Jesus had a much bigger plan than that. But they did welcome him as king. And then we'll see later on, just days later, much of the same crowd who welcomed Jesus as a king will soon renounce him, reject him, and call for his crucifixion. And something that's always bugged me as I read that account is how can they change their minds so quickly? How can you, at one moment, call him king, and then just days later, call for him to die? But you know what? The more I've thought about that over the years, let me share a thought with you that's really occurred to me that was kind of a, a gut check. And that is, how often do we, even as Christians, treat Jesus the same way? We call him king on one day, probably on Sunday. But then, just a day later, like on Monday, we go into work or we start living our lives, we forget Jesus is king. We act like he's not God, he's not sovereign, that he's not our Lord. We act like he hasn't given us his word that guides the way we live and think and use our money, the way we speak, the way we conduct ourselves, and we live lives according to our own ideas. We call him king one day, and then the very next we reject his authority and his lordship. Not that different from the crowd we see at the triumphal entry. You see, we kind of treat Jesus the way the British treat the Queen of England in many cases. Yeah, the Queen of England holds top position and title, but has no real authority. <laughs> Sorry to my British friends, all right? But we, oftentimes we treat Jesus like that. Oh, yeah, he's king. We give him that title, but then we don't act like it. We act like he has no authority when nothing could be further from the truth. He is the God of the universe, and we are to take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ and live every area of our lives to his glory. Let's don't imitate the crowds here at the triumphal entry, but let's serve him faithfully unto his glory and for our good in every area. You guys have a good day. We'll talk later on. See ya.